UIU 6413 was written by Dr. Sumerian, that be me. You can find it on the SCP Wiki and a link in the description below. It is under a Creative Commons share-alike attribution license. Designation of Oddity. The oddity found in Deadwood's Number 10 Saloon is to be designated UIU 6413 until such a time as it is removed from its current location. On limiting risks. UIU 6413 is mostly at risk of public perception. Given the operation of the Confederate inspectors out of the nearby Belly Union Hotel, it is of utmost importance that the existence of UIU 6413 be kept from public cognizance. The owner of the Number 10 Saloon, Mr. Billy Nuttall, is neither friendly nor unfriendly to our presence, but is happy to have gamblers and drinkers in the establishment. Given this, we have placed Special Agents 1 and 2 in Deadwood to deny access to UIU 6413 on a daily basis. As Mr. Nuttall is aware of the dangerous nature of UIU 6413, it is not expected that access to it during closing hours is likely. Of course, beyond the obfuscation of the oddity by our agents, it presents a natural danger to anyone who places a part of their body inside the opening. This is the primary behavior that should be prevented. The Oddity UIU 6413 is an interstitial opening approximately one and a half feet across in the western standing wall of the number 10 saloon of Deadwood in the Dakota Territory. When living matter of any kind is placed inside the oddity, the matter will be drawn strongly inwards. Material that passes the boundary of the oddity does not exit on the other side of the wall. The wall itself appears whole from the outside of the saloon, despite the opening being quite large and deeper than the wall's thickness. Things that are too large to easily pass through the opening are not a barrier to the inward pull of the oddity. The discovery of the oddity took place when the then co-owner of the saloon, John Manny, discovered the opening and placed his hand inside. Mr. Nuttall reported that Mr. Manning was firmly lodged up to his shoulder in the oddity for about two hours, during which time he complained of thirst and hunger. Mr. Nuttall detailed the event further to our agents. At first, I thought I heard a great cracking, and I stand by that assumption. But there was with it a sort of sliding sound as Johnny started to flex like a balloon. He puffed up a bit, and then he deflated just as quickly. It was as if all the humors were drained directly from his body. He cried out, and I was tempted to take his free hand and give a mighty pull, but there was scant time to speak, much less act. Johnny's body went limp as the rest of him, sins and all, went through the hole like medicine into the greedy mouth of the infirm. There was nothing left but some blood, claw marks on the wall, and a memory. I quick first boarded the wall and went to report the incident to the sheriff. The sheriff of Deadwood is friendly to our cause and contacted us immediately. The few suspicions of murder were quickly quelled, and the story of Mr. Manning's new life in San Francisco was disseminated. Additional Complication 1 A new complication has arisen in the form of Tom Miller. Mr. Miller, the owner of the Belly Union, has made several practical offers on Mr. Nuttall's establishment through his agent, Jack McCall. Mr. Nuttall does not appear to be eager to sell, as he has already turned down several generous offers from our own agents. Mr. Miller, however, is a known member of the renegade group known as the Confederate Inspectors. Our agents have made clear that any offer by Mr. Miller will be matched and exceeded by ourselves. There is a small risk that Mr. Nuttall uses this bidding process to drive up the price of his establishment to unreasonable heights. We believe there is a fair chance that Mr. Miller or his associates will simply kill Mr. Nuttall and seize the property in this case. Protection for Mr. Nuttall is to be utilized to prevent this possibility. Additional complication number two. Mr. McCall has become a frequent patron of the Number 10 Saloon since his offers of purchase were rebuffed. Agent 1 has ensured that he is seated next to the oddity during most of the saloon's opening hours, with Agent 2 acting as relief. This has prevented direct access to the oddity, but it appears that Mr. McCall, and likely the Confederate inspectors as a whole, are aware of the oddity. Mr. Nuttall may have been using knowledge of the oddity to solicit a higher offer, as previously suspected. Additional agents have been requested and are on their way, though it will be a week before they arrive. While it is not known how the oddity could be weaponized or utilized to harm the Union directly, it is quite a bit more dangerous than most oddities and must be kept out of Confederate hands at all costs. 
Telegrams received on August 2nd, 1876. New complication. Confederate agent Jack McCall has killed Agent 1. Wild Bill Hickok was shot in the back of the head. Request instructions on how to proceed. Sheriff Seth Bullock. Martha Jane Cannery has captured Jack McCall. Agent has refused to turn him over for arrest. Request instructions on how to proceed. Sheriff Seth Bullock. McCall has been taken to the number 10 saloon. McCall's hand has been placed in the oddity by Cannery. Urgently request instructions on how to proceed. Sheriff Seth Bullock. New complication. McCall has been killed by the oddity. Crowd horrified. Miss Cannery has been arrested. Request instructions on how to proceed. Extremely urgent. Sheriff Seth Bullock. A reply is currently being drafted. Sheriff Bullock is not a UIU agent and has not been fully informed of our anonymous nature. His naming of our agents in a telegram does constitute its own complication. But the death of Agent 1 and arrest of Agent 2 is a significant complication as well, though none of these are intractable. An additional supervisory agent has been dispatched with haste to Deadwood's Number 10 Saloon to oversee the oddities protection. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And then head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Sinjariki, who is pledged at $100. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here. And I will see you all again on Tuesday.